anime for trash dwellers. We are talking about Battle Athletes Victory Restart. It is a reboot of the original series from the late 90s. I honestly assumed it was from the 80s because everyone wears classic 80s attire of leotards, baby. Yeah, let's do some aerobics, guys. Our main girl even wears yellow sweatbands like, whoa, let's put some Olivia Newton-John on, baby. It is that the queen of the universe is decided from teenage girls competing in the Olympics. Fuck, fuck, fuck yeah. So yes, everything about this is insane and hence why I have to watch it. We follow the path of the human rep who gets picked because a cute alien girl crashed in her field and told her she had to compete since she no longer could. Like, okay, fair enough. Apparently this cute alien girl landed in the best field possible because since this girl spends so much time on the farm, she's turned into a super athlete. I'm pretty sure all farm work leaves you with is a sore back. She competes in the qualifier, which I didn't even realize was a qualifier. I was very confused about them just showing part of the sports comp before she arrived at university satellite where it's held. It's a running course, which then involves climbing up a mountain barehanded. Fuck yeah, love this Bear Grylls action. She wins, but not before carrying the other girl who fell off the mountain without getting paralyzed, which is supposed to be a nice gesture, but it would have been better if she just left it there for the ambos to come find her. Rule of first aid, if there is the possibility that the individual has broken their spine, you don't move them. Yeah, main girl just returns to the finish line only to discover she turned this girl into a paraplegic. Main girl travels to university satellite and all she packs is potatoes. Why she packs potatoes? Look, it's either because of the comedic influence that Potato Girl from Attack on Titan had on anime, or because back in the late 90s that shit was still considered funny. Anyway, it's not funny, because this girl knew she would be attending an academy and therefore would have all her meals provided for her, so there is absolutely no reason why she would convince herself she would need just that many potatoes. So I guess we're just gonna call her Potato Girl too then. We have a quick one minute scene of the villains saying how they just use the queen as a puppet to rule the galaxy, just so we are aware of that in the most unnuanced and unsubtle way possible. Oh yeah, by the way, the event is actually called Cosmo Beauty, even though it's not a beauty contest, it's a dangerous sports event where the survivor gets to rule over the galaxy. But not really, they're just a figurehead whilst the villains reign in the smallest room possible. They were in this tiny, tiny room. Like, if you're that almighty and powerful, surely you can afford something slightly nicer and larger than a broom closet to hold your secret evil meetings in. We meet the other contenders, a child doctor from Pluto, rich bitch from Mars who's competing to help with the representation of her family's company. No, 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 I do not want Mars Amazon running the universe. The refugee from the war-torn moon? And she has a boxing kangaroo? Look, nothing really makes sense in this show, so of course I have no fucking idea why there's a kangaroo from the moon. I may have missed some. Who knows? But then the last one is our token lesbian from Venus who has a prosthetic leg and arm that she is very sensitive about. Half of her dialogue is her shouting at Potato Girl to stop pitying her because she's disabled. It feels like how sexists depict feminists as always shouting for basic rights and it's like, yeah, they do do that, but like, that's reasonable? You know, it's reasonable for women to ask to not be raped and shit. And it's reasonable for lesbian chan to ask people to just treat her like a normal person instead of turning every single living, breathing moment of her life into virtue born. Some bully comes along and picks on Potato Girl because if she teams up with the girl with the fake limbs, she's gonna lose. And then Potato Girl proves that won't be the case because she's freakishly strong from the one time she built a log cabin as a child. I don't even know if she needed to build the goddamn thing since it's just her in the flashback and no one else telling her what to do. Ten-year-old hair was just bored and went fuck it and built a fucking log cabin to pass the time. 
Episode 2, school's rough for Potato Girl as she has to fight off that bloody kangaroo. Even tougher than Australia since the opportunity to bog a kangaroo rarely comes up. We are introduced to the cool detective character of the series, Jeff. Jeff there talking to the principal who's a cute old grandma that makes nice cookies, about a terrorist attack at a cafe her pupils frequent. So he reckon they're terrorists after Moon Girl. During running practice, Potato Girl is falling behind everyone else despite the fact she's been written as being superhuman from her days farming. But I guess that's only in strength and not stamina. So Alien Girl from the flashback is in the tournament, even though the whole flashback gave us the impression she was unable to compete, and she's the superhuman fastest out of the lot of them. She goes straight to the sick bay run by the scientist mining her, and when she questions why he's only treating her and not doing his job and treating everyone, he goes, I leave the swine to the swine! Well, I am pretty sure that mentality makes you the shittiest doctor ever. Oh, an American doctor. Booyah, look at me with my sick political commentary. Fuck you! Yeah. Give me a Q&A! So the biggest reveal is this girl is representing the villains who want to control the world from the shadows and that she is a genetically engineered human. Rich Bitch and Moon Girl are roommates and when the arguing Rich Bitch says stay away from me you refugee like oh damn look at that blatant racism. The first big event of the tournament occurs and it's a zero gravity dodgeball in a sphere. The weird way they've portrayed lesbian Chan comes back, her prosthetic limbs somehow short out whenever they touch the ball, even though if it had the electrical or physical capacity to do that to prosthetic limbs, it would burn or break the arm of any human. This means that Potato Girl has to take the last shot of the game, and it's seen as this sweet character development moment as she learns to accept help from others, even though that attitude is incredibly demeaning to disabled people, like they have to be grateful for your help, like no, people in wheelchairs don't appreciate it when a random stranger just starts moving their wheelchair for them. Like, no thank you very much, buddy. That's what me arms and fingers are for. I can move my own wheelchair by myself. Rich Bitch and Moon Girl get into an argument and drop all the juicy goss. Rich Bitch's family sells firearms to the moon and she decides to defend herself by saying, oh, but it's you moon people's fault for fighting in the first place. Yeah, but I think they do considerably less damage if they didn't have bazookas on hand. And that, I know people say behind my back that I'm the daughter of an arms dealer, but like, you literally are? Uh, like, usually when you talk about people talking behind your back is because they're shitting on you for no real reason and calling you petty things like bitch but no it is a literal fact that you are the daughter of an arms dealer then she accuses moon girl of sabotaging her because she wants her dead and moon girl straight up says no because i want you to suffer like i do whilst a little bit of lincoln park plays in the background they have a rooftop race rich bitch checks her privilege and all is good Episode 3. In the future, people use creepy holograms to try and wake themselves up, only for it to not work in the slightest. Since their next Cosmo Beauty event will be air, water, and land, the gang decide to go through their training arc. They go out into the middle of the woods because Potato Girl says it's where her grandma trained. You would think as soon as this girl moved to University Satellite that it would be brought up that, hey, I used to have a relative who lived here. Like, that would be the natural progression in which this conversation would occur. Her, but no, it's only brought up now and not even properly explained, so who knows if it'll even be brought up again. Their training involves more bare hand rock climbing, paragliding, and mining. I know that mining would indeed be good exercise, build up those arm muscles, but there isn't going to be an event in this sports based competition where you just have to mine. They also meditate under a waterfall and change into a different leotard for this, even though they didn't change into a different leotard when swimming before. We see their progression via the kangaroo whipping everyone's butts to the kangaroo getting whipped by everyone else, except that this transition only happens in a day. A single day they improve that much. Well shit ladies, I'd say they've probably been putting a little bit of extra something in the chicken if you know what I mean. Except that their muscle mass is in their thighs and like absolutely nowhere else on their petite little bodies at all. 
After their amazing day of training with so many games, they're talking in their little tent about why they want to become Cosmo Beauty. Of course, little one no lesbian Chan wants to do so so that she can prove she can do it, despite her prosthetics. Really, she didn't even need to say it. Lydia the rich bitch, nothing says white and privilege quite like the name Lydia wants to because she's always number one in everything, including ruling over the galaxy. Hey, just like Donald Trump. Dr. Chan wants to because her colony is ravaged by a disease with no known origins. Too soon anime. So she wants to give proper medical clinics and gear and shit to fight it. Potato Girl feels it's probably too soon to bring up the fact that Alien Chan landed on her planet five years ago and begged her to enter the comp in her place. So instead she just says, Duh, it's cause I want the whole world to know about potatoes. And everyone buys it because she's a country bumpkin. Of course her motivation is potato related. Mind you, introducing a healthy vegetable to the entire galaxy isn't a bad idea. When alone, Yana the Moon Refugee talks to Lydia about how, oh yeah, back on the moon it was terrible, but with everyone dying from those weapons of mass destruction that they got off of someone, subtle man. She confesses that she wants to win in order to stop the civil war on the moon. After seeing flashbacks of said war and remembering this franchise originally started in 1997, this is definitely a representation of the Afghan war. And Lydia says she wants to so that she can stop her family's company from supplying weapons of mass destruction used to aid in said civil war, stating, I now realize they're wrong. Like, it was a big revolution to hear that selling children machine guns that leads to many deaths is bad, as opposed to it being a fucking obvious fact. Either way, both of them wanting to win to stop war makes Lesbian Chan look super fucking shallow in comparison. At the end of the last episode, Jeff died in an explosion, except that he didn't! No, he saw and heard the not very well hidden bomb cube at his feet and was able to escape from the car in the nick of time. So he's back on the case! He looks at all the Cosmo Beauty contenders files and when he gets to Alien Chan, it just has nothing. Like, her name and gender are just listed as nothing personality, nothing, and his special skill is poker face. And old Jeff, oh, he's a smart one. He figures, hmm, the only documentation lacking any information on the individual seems suspicious. Episode 4, it is the start of the tri -harsh! But it isn't even a regular triathlon, let alone a harder version of it, because the three events are performed on different days instead of one after the other. The first one is hang gliding, and Alien Chan is first, and Potato Girl is second. The others speculate that maybe she's on roids, but then Moon Girl's like, it's probably because she was naturally talented at a young age and has continued practicing and working hard in order to improve her athleticism. Ha! <laughs> As if! Nah, rich bitch overheard her dad at a dodgy meeting with a comp runner, so they all reckon Cosmo Beauty's being rigged in her favour. Potato Girl is not part of the conversation because she's too busy fighting the kangaroo. Never fight a kangaroo! <laughs> They're fucking like two metres worth of pure muscle. Never fight a kangaroo! <laughs> Our favourite copper, Jeff, finds another bomb in his car. This time it's just up on the dashboard, giving him plenty of time to exit. Like, what kind of terrorists get sloppier with their attacks as they go along? He invites Alien Chan to meet her at a bar. I guess because her class papers probably put her age as invalid, so he went, hey, it doesn't say she's under the drinking age. For some reason, she decides to wear her black bull shawl. Like, no, don't do that. Everyone will make fun of you for, for your shit taste in anime. The said bar is so frustrating because it isn't playing Axel F, but it is some cheap copyright-free knockoff that sounds just similar enough that every time you hear it, your brain goes, is this Axel F? Ugh. Apart from figuring out terrorist attacks, Jeff is also looking into a missing persons case involving Alien Chan's mum and some other lady that he's vague about his relationship to. He's like, she's an acquaintance. No, 
she's more like my idol. So, so is she an idol? And you're just too embarrassed to admit how much time and energy you've put into this parasocial relationship? Or is she just some poor lady you used to stalk? Because that's the vibe I'm getting here, Jeff. And then the glorious happens. In another attempt on Jeff's life, Trakun drives into the bar. This isn't your small delivery van, Trakun. Nah. This is a massive fucking transport log truck. Truck summer! But then there is a bomb on top of the truck. So the truck was supposed to completely squash Jeff to a pulp and then blow up his remains. Neither of which happened. Imagine having a backup in your murder attempt fail too, man. This terrorist is pretty fucking shit at their job. And there's a reason for that, because the terrorist is a failed moon candidate who's doing terrorist work to stop the civil war on the moon. Hasn't stopped it so far. She tries to guilt trip Moon Girl into murdering Rich Bitch because that will stop the Civil War. Okay, no, it won't. If she's dead, she's dead. They can't do shack shit about that. But if she's kidnapped now, there we go. That's what it whack. So the episode ends with Moon Girl's eyes filled with the horror at the idea of killing her friend. And then the cutesy ending plays with pretty cherry blossoms falling to really fit the mood. Episode 5. The water level of the trihush is them canoeing to try and tag a whale with like a little plunger that sets off a firework. For most of that trial, I thought they were trying to capture the whale and I'm like, gosh, well this fun romp of a show got a bit morbid. Speaking of morbid though, Moon Girl's terrorist buddy appears via a hologram and drops off an invisible handgun for her to assassinate Rich Bitch with. I do not know a great deal about guns, but I'm pretty sure when it comes to assassination, aka sneakily murdering someone, a handgun would not be the weapon of choice. For her to use it, she would have to row herself right next to this girl, grab the invisible handgun that turns visible as soon as it's in someone's hands. Oh yeah, real useful skill there. And then hold it point blank to hit her. And since it's visible, everyone would see it in her hands as she goes to shoot it. She felt pressured to do it since Terror Girl saved her life in the past, but she doesn't because Rich Bitch was nice to her. During the whale chase, Lesbian Chan short circuits. The one medical staff hired for Cosmo Beauty is the scientist guy looking after Alien Chan. So she goes in and tells him, hey, someone out here is about to die and like, you're a doctor and your job is to prevent death, so yeah. And then he goes, hey, come over here. So Alien Chan does, just for him to slap her in the face. Why he couldn't just walk up to her to do that is beyond me. There was also a meeting with the evil council. He said Alien Chan was imperfect because she's kind. Oh no, no kindness. Our over the top cartoon villains can't stand kindness. Lesbian Chan is eventually sent to hospital, but not by any of the officials on the Cosmo Beauty Committee, but by Jeff, cause he just happened to be watching the event from the luxury cruise liner. Like, I get that the people running Cosmo Beauty are just using it to make it seem like a fair election, as fair as making the ruler of the world the best at a sports carnival is, but you think they will put a bit more effort into hiding that fact. We get Lesbian Chan's backstory of how she got her prosthetic limbs, and it was because she was hit by truck summer! What on earth is it with these massive trucks bloody running into people all the time? Plus, it's a total cop-out to bring back the same kill twice. Get more creative, writing team. Then Potato Girl's real smooth and Lesbian Chan says, Ooh, keep being that smooth and I'll be lesbian for you. And Potato Girl's like, Hey, why don't you then? Then Jeff's having tea with the principal and she says, Oh, you haven't eaten any cookies! And he responds, It's because I don't have anything. Sweet to tell you. Then he puts on his sunglasses on as the CSI Miami theme plays. Episode 6. Moon Girl's getting pressured by a friend to murder again for the upcoming final part of the tri -hush, The running! Not quite as exciting as hang gliding and chasing a whale in a kayak. Jeff is still there looking at all the bios at the school trying to snoop out Alien Chan. The dodgy school doctor offers Alien Chan a nice dinner and she's super sus about it. And he's like, no, you deserve it for how well you've done in the tri -hush. 
you can trust me. And then he proceeds to also invite her replacement if she doesn't stop being so goddamn nice to everyone. You can't win and become Cosmo Beauty of the Galaxy if you're nice! This manipulation feels very Handmaid's Tale, like I'm expecting Aunt Lydia to barge in and give her weird morality talking to her while simultaneously whipping her. The Doctor Lady reckons her alien chance a bit sus, so she sneaks in and googles her. She is from a planet that this lady describes as a slave colony. Well, isn't the future lovely? When she finds that out, she immediately jumps to the conclusion that some dodgy organization must be sponsoring her, as opposed to she entered to liberate her planet like Moon Girl did. Um, that's galactic racism. So she isn't an alien. They have probably already discussed this. I'm just a little bit forgetful and stupid. She is a genetically modified human being. Dr. Lady makes in hindsight the stupid decision to try to make a deal with the dodgy people behind Gattaca-chan because their gene modification could help save her people from that disease. We don't see what they do to her, but she doesn't turn up for the try harsh the next day. Potato Girl delays her start to the race because she's waiting for Dr. Lady to arrive. For fuck's sake, half of this episode has been people encouraging you to win this leg of the trihash. At least act like it made you want to win. And Moon Girl just kind of gives up and half ass jogs after Arms Dealer's daughter tried to motivate her to get going because, like, she doesn't want to kill her bestie. But also, she feels compelled to help out her other bestie who literally saved her life one time. Oh my god, girl problems. Jeez, Zayla Moon, why'd you let the moon go to shit like that? And considering all that's happening in Palestine at the moment of writing, the whole arms dealer daughter character feels very close to home. So there was a reason why all our mains decided to like not start the race. And that's so they don't get caught in the explosion of the mountain section of the course that the terrorists caused, so that she can help her reluctant friend to murder that bitch. Episode 7, the bombing! Everyone's in shock! One girl damages her leg and the others help her because helping her is more important than winning. No, love, it's because you're a background character and you sure as hell wouldn't have been winning it anyway. Mean Girl is really feeling the pressure to kill Arms Dealer Girl. But then she can't after she says her happiest moment was when she made a friend who didn't hate her for her family. Um, sweetheart, you are rich, which means you would attend a rich private school with other children of warlords. And you would all get along with one another and have no judgment about the crimes your parents committed and happily and gaily get along with life. So instead she goes to shoot herself, but it's Jeff to the rescue as he shoots the gun out of her hand. Terrorist girl arrives to finish Arms Dealer Girl off, but she's captured by Jeff instead, only to reveal that Arms Dealer Girl was not her main target, but Gattaca-chan because she knows about the Shadow Committee behind the comp, which benefits the Arms Dealer's family, so she's still doing terrorist work to help the moon in the long run. Episode 8! Whilst Jeff is driving with the terrorists back to the finish line, he asks her, hmm, must have been hard being so lonely as a terrorist. I'm pretty sure while she was working as a terrorist, the furthest thought away from her mind would have been, boo hoo, I'm so lonely. The evil shadow organization behind the government has got their new Gattaca clone out, with the idea that she will murder Gattaca-chan and just replace her in the race without no one noticing. But I guess it doesn't matter if anyone notices since they're the shadow government that, that controls the entire universe. What the fuck are the civilians gonna do about it anyway? And it's down to Potato Girl and Gattaca-chan and who's gonna win? When they're both struggling from running so much, it is Potato Girl who wins because she thinks of her love loved ones and just how grateful she is for them and now she's gonna use that motivation to stop anyone else from being lonely and zooms across the finish line due to the power of kindness. Does this mean if she wins Cosmo Beauty her first order of action will be to give every lonely person a stuffed Kirby doll like they do at that one Kirby cafe in Japan? Was Gattaca-chan had no one to call on. All she had were her nightmares from the one person who did love her being forcibly taken away from her. So in the end, good mental health defeated childhood trauma. Terrorist girl gets away from Jeff, the bomb being hidden in the podium. But since Gattaca-chan didn't win like she expected, meaning she wouldn't have killed her target anyway, she's just gonna have to have the bomb go off by itself and kill no one but her. Maybe if Jeff was better with his inspirational piece 
pieces like Naruto is, then this mightn't have been a problem. And Gattaca-chan finally remembers Potato Girl from the past and proceeds to have an existential crisis. She also says that Dr. Chan willingly went away with the stupid dodgy doctor, but I'm pretty sure he kidnapped her. Don't know why you're lying about it, but whatever. Episode 9. It opens with a flashback to Gattaca Chan's grueling training, which is her as a child struggling to lift this massive thing of weights whilst all the evil middle aged men are just standing around her laughing. Like, it was supposed to be an Oh, that was so awful to her moment and not comedic, but <laughs> it sure as hell was comedic. They're not sure what to do about this whole evil shadow government thing, but after the kangaroo hands them a photo of their principal, Miss Cookie, they decide to visit her. But the photo the kangaroo gave them is the old lady all dolled up in makeup, and then he's upset when he doesn't get to come along with them. Did they just try to make a joke about the kangaroo having the hots for an old lady? And if so, why? Dr. Chum was kidnapped, but is working with the evil scientist man since he promises to share his research with her so that she can save her planet from the plague. So he's like, hey, could you help control that clone so that she doesn't go on a murderous rampage and destroy millions of dollars worth of equipment and maiming staff members? It's a real bummer for employee morale. When the girls go to Miss Cookie's office, Jeff is there again because he's always just hanging out there. She makes good cookies. Who can blame him? When they bring up the shadow government and are surprised to discover that Jeff knows about them too, he's like, well, I have my ways of gaining information. Mate, you didn't do shit. You just sat in a car ride with a terrorist who baby fed you all that information. It's not like you discovered it through top notch investigations or anything. He says how the terrorist's corpse wasn't found after the explosion. Lol, guess he's kind of come back before the show ends. Then he's like, here's some evidence from the blast. Please, everyone, make sure to have a good look at this confidential piece of information and to contaminate it with your bare hands as much as possible. And then a minute later, he's talking about the importance of hard evidence. They make it sound like the shadow government doesn't necessarily run the government, but more that Cosmo Beauty brings money so that they know in advance which planet to plant more businesses in and stuff, which is still evil, but just not as evil. Dr. Chan realizes that Gattaca Chan's clone keeps going psycho because she needs to cool down. Look, I, I, I will admit, I don't pay a whole lot of attention when watching this show, but I honestly can't think of any other way to explain that and have it make sense. Plus, it really shows just how much effort these billionaires put in to bug a race. Like, surely there was a quicker and cheaper way to do it than to create multiple self-destructive clones. Bones. Episode 10. I was thinking, because in this show there's this whole kind of friendship is important and special theme in it, but like the main friend group are all the girls who keep getting in the top 10 of the Cosmo Beauty comps. So in actuality, they're all too snobby and good to allow nobodies to join their friendship group. And it's time for the obstacle course. So the political leader of the galaxy is decided by the best at Ninja Warrior. Did double check and the battle Athlete's Victory Property and the first episode of Ninja Warrior both debuted in 1994. So no, unfortunately, Ninja Warrior was not inspired by this TV show of teenage girls battling in various sporting events to decide which one of them gets to become the most powerful person in the universe. There's your standard Ninja Warrior stuff like water, poles you gotta jump on, swinging monkey bars, random bursts of air. Is random but severe Ninja Warrior? Then there's just three really heavy doors you have to push open. I'm starting to feel that they really geared this come towards girls and what they believe girls would find struggling that men necessarily wouldn't, such as opening a heavy door. The last event is a big, wet, slippery pole you gotta climb up. I know the Ninja Warrior races finish on a platform, but I think they're baby wiener cheetah ones which have things like steps to help you climb. Ho ho ho! So easy for little baby competitors. Future ruler of the entire universe has to be able to do better than steps. Moon Girl is out of the comp for some reason, I think. She hasn't competed yet, not sure. Maybe she quit because she was kinda involved in a terrorist attack. Daughter of a warmonger made it to the doors. Ah, 
foiled by heavy doors. Also, so she's a petite blonde from Mars from an evil family. Well, I guess Carol and Tuesday became irrelevant after World Aid. Lesbian Chan also don't enter because her new prosthetics didn't arrive in time and she has grown as a character and decided that instead of entering the competition and electrocuting herself to death halfway through, she would prefer to live. Which is a good message to send since there is a lot of discourse around how members of the disabled community should be doing more and trying their hardest when it's like, dude, I could do that and be unable to walk for the rest of the week or I could keep myself healthy and be able to participate in life. Gattaca Chan's fucking brain malfunctions mid course so she's out. Our girl Potato Girl, oh, she gives it a fair shot, but she doesn't make it past the big pole. Too wet and slippery and windy. When she's opening the very heavy door, she gets the athlete's glow that was established before, which is basically just them going super sane. Now, Clone Chan is replacing the dog instead of Gattaca Chan, and whilst everyone else struggled with the Ninja Warrior course, she finishes it in like 10 seconds flat. So the evil doctor comes to take Gattaca-chan away since she's faulty and the doc's like So are you going to give me the research you've been doing in DNA manipulation so that I can save my dying planet? You know, since you said you would after I trained your child soldier. What, you won't? You're a big evil villain man and you didn't uphold your promise? Well, honestly, yeah, that that's more on me for trusting an evil eugenic scientist conspiring to take over the universe. But not to fear, Jeff is here and he brought all the coaches to help him out. Imagine if police enlisted the help of gym teachers with a sting up. Fucking wild, but oh no, Clone Chan and the evil eugenics men still get away. Man, who would have thought all those missed trunch bowls wouldn't be enough to stop them? Episode 11. Now, it's gonna get Chan's turn to have her lesbian romance ending shot with Potato Girl as she retires from the race and hands the reins over to Potato Girl. The evil council are feeling the pressure that their evil plan to continue controlling the world government from the shadows will be foiled by a teenage girl who's just too good at running and so decide to send their evil scientist down to Earth to assassinate her family. And he's like, what? That isn't in my job description. And then they bring up that his job description did include getting Gattaca-chan up to speed to win the entire race, which she has done to the exact opposite of and just quit the entire race. So since he isn't doing that crack hot shit a job as a scientist, he's just gonna be an assassin instead. The next round in the Cosmo Beauty is Human Billards, where you gotta punch a ball real hard in any gravity in order to send the other massive billards balls into the holes. This is definitely a highlight in our wacky sports to determine which teenage girl runs the universe competition. The evil council like electrocute the punching ball to force Potato Girl to pass out. Guys, we've already done Girl Lost Comp Fire electrocution. Boring! Give me something different to spice things up a bit. Just feed your Potato Girl too many cars with all the comps so that she gets cramp or something. Evil scientist is about to head to Earth after his demotion from scientist to guy who points goons in direction of killing. But it's Jeff, everyone! Jeff's here! He's done it again! He even has a great CSI Miami quote, I just got here faster, because I can sniff out losers quicker. Yeah! So after electrocution, now Potato Girl's bed bound. Fuck me, we see the hospital a lot in this series, but I guess that just shows how dangerous the Cosmo Beauty really is. Episode 12. Everyone's watching over bedbound Potato Girl, who clings to Moon Girl in her sleep, making Daughter of a Warlord annoyed, and she says while she's blushing, I mean, Moon Girl and I are just, you know, anyway. Oh nah, I see a bit of unrequited love going on. While I was monkeying around with everyone on her bed, someone accidentally says the password that sets off the message that's been stored in her yellow sweatband she wears. Well, these are officially the most expensive and useful sweatbands ever. 
These sweatbands were given to her by Gadaka-chan in that flashback. Never brought up because who the fuck thought a pair of sweatbands would be plot relevant? It is revealed that the secret headquarters where the villains have been holding all their meetings is... Behind the school sick bay? They've just hidden this ridiculous futuristic meaning space behind the sick bay of what is essentially an old English boarding school? I just assumed it was a room on a spaceship, but no! For some reason, it looks completely different from the rest of the architecture in this building and somehow managed to stay hidden from the hundreds of people that use its facilities every day. And now, it is the final race, Jimmy! The commentator for the event sees Potato Girl and gets super excited and he's like uh, uh, and back to his serious commentating style. The very last big event in this tournament is a 100 meter dash between Potato Girl and Clone Chan. I mean, ending your big sports tournament to pick the ruler of the galaxy with a running race seems a bit lackluster. During the race, not only does Potato Girl go Super Saiyan, but she goes Rainbow Super Saiyan because of the power of friendship! And this is enough for her to just win! Yeah. I'm sure the power of friendship is also the secret to Usain Bolt's illustrious sports career. After her win, she sets off her sweatband so that it's broadcast all over the galaxy about the evil shadow government imprisoning Garagachan's mum. But on low, the shadow government sent horns to Potato Girl's little farm family back on Earth. But never fear, a gym teacher is here. So she smacks them around with her massive cartoon fan. Y you get them in Smash Bros, those ones. But then they pull out their guns, but she's not afraid. She's just like, fine, pull it, and just stands there smug as hell full of confidence, and they eventually lower their guns. She didn't even do anything. If they shot that, she would be dead, but no, they didn't shoot her because that's the power a gym teacher holds. And then Jeff arrives to arrest them, and they're like, but how did you know we tried to kill the family of the one person standing in the way of the shadow government's continuing reign? And Jeff's response is, because I'm a cool policeman. <laughs> yes, Jeff, you queen. The writing team just gave up on making him witty and just went, fuck it. Just show he's cool by having him literally say that he's cool. So we get the cool montage to music of everyone's happily ever afters. Just for Potato Girl to explain to us in full what each of those happy endings are. As if a montage isn't a film technique used as a way to quickly run over events so that you don't have to watch them explained in full. So Gattaca Chan got her mum back and they're spending their time looking after Clone Chan in hospital. The kangaroo ends up with them, which I mean, why would the kangaroo stay with them? But then it's explained that the kangaroo puts its little joeys being used as animal therapy for Clone Chan. Oh, okay, that's cute. Don't ask me where the fuck the extra kangaroos came from either. Jeff gets that random woman back too. Remember how they were imprisoned by the shadow government? Like, yeah, it was brought up maybe once? But hey, he got his girl back. That's nice. And yeah, she's happy to be back, so... I at least know that their relationship is not him being her stalker. Lesbian Chan is a world champ in beach volleyball, including with some random other student from the academy like, okay, I'm sure you guys had at least one scene together, but I honestly can't remember you at all. Dog the Lady created a medicine capable of helping people with that disease on her planet, and she came up with it all by herself with no help whatsoever, meaning that her joining Cosmo Beauty did nothing to help her people. If anything, all it did was delay that health intervention. She literally caused people to die due to that delay. Fucking girl, just admit you entered because tryhards are fun. And yeah, she didn't even get any help from the evil organization she worked for briefly. Fucking everything she did was for nothing. Daughter of a warmonger forced her dad to retire and took over the company and therefore stopped creating weapons of mass destruction. Hooray! I'm sure as a CEO, she's still doing plenty of other dodgy things like low wages and pollution and funding other dodgy products. But whatever, at least she isn't create weapons of mass destruction evil. 
Since she is no longer supplying weapons, that means the civil war on the moon has stopped. Yeah, because that's exactly what would happen in real life. It's not like they just find other ways to gain weapons or anything. Plus, at least in real life, a lot of these weapons are gained through the government as opposed to from third parties anyway. But that's all over, and Terrorist Girl is here too. See? See, when I thought they left her death ambiguous, it would be so that she could come back as a villain later, or something else clever, as opposed to so that she gets a happy ending too. Even though she tried to kill people and did injure at least one person. I still call bullshit that Moon Girl didn't hook up with Miss CEO. You know, she's a multi-billionaire. She could pay for Moon Girl to get flown to the moon if she's getting lonely. And Potato Girl, well, her first act as a politician is to have a more democratic system put in place to decide who rules over the entire galaxy than through a big sports competition. But the Cosmo Beauty is still on, you just win a big trophy if you win, as opposed to one of the most powerful jobs in the universe. And then she graciously quits. And yeah, she just goes back to bumming around on her parents' farm. This was a very weird show. Kinda wish more people watched it. Like, it's bad. But the animation and pacings and just all the weird shit that happens is probably just enough to keep people engaged. And that was Anime for Trash Dwellers and Weeb on Instagram, Tumblr, and Twitter. Bye!